Yes, no, maybe. There it is, ladies and gents. A little bit of delay because of the internet, but hey, what are you going to do? So listen up, ladies and gents. Cash is king, especially when you know and can predict exactly how much revenue is coming into your business. If you don't know how to predict that or what to do to make that happen, then this episode's for you. Let's get this one on the road. Here we go. Shut up and sit down. Look, a business can give you everything you want in life. Uh, let's Prestige. See. Maybe it's stream your that's acting. It can also take everything Man, away can you hear from you. Sir? This show is for those who are willing to take that risk. These are the real life stories of entrepreneurs. But before we start, I have one small favor to ask. Please leave a comment. It could be advice, critiques, tips, feedback, or share this with someone because your engagement is the most valuable and most powerful form of social currency. So thank you, and welcome to another episode of Business Bros! All right, I don't know what's going on there, but here we go, ladies and gents. Look, in business, recurring revenue is king. Knowing exactly what kind of income you can expect to make this month or this year is vital in planning and growing a business. The struggle is that most businesses operate in cash bursts versus cash flow. They make sales and they get paid. The more sales they make, the better. But if sales drop off, that company is in trouble. Our guest is here to share with us how subscriptions can help scale a company and even make it more attractive if you're looking to sell or raise capital. So let's get ready to top subscriptions with Mr. Matthew Holman. Man, you got me psyched up. I got snow outside my door, but I'm I got a party in here. I love it. Let's jump into this thing, man. So uh, recurring revenue. I want to know, first of all, I mean, everybody, The I, I feel like the the dream of any business is to have that cash flow coming in every single month, to have a recurring right. revenue stream. But maybe not every business is built for a subscription, or do you kind of disagree? It's, it's an interesting question. I think that a lot of, I think there's a lot more companies that could do subscriptions, but there are definitely some businesses where it just doesn't make sense. So, I mean, it, it's really just about getting creative and we'll talk about it. It's thinking about how you can get more engagement from your customers, but also thinking about maybe like, say, like, say a, a really common one somebody asked me about recently is podcasting services, right? So say you're selling podcasting services. Here's, here's the package. Well, maybe that works for some core customers, but for another vertical of customers that do more of that on their own and they just want, maybe they just want access to you as a consultant occasionally then you can, maybe they pay you a hundred dollars a month so that they can schedule a free call, a call every month or, or getting access to extra content. So there's a lot of ways to get creative with it. It just comes down to whether you're thinking about what your customers actually need. Let's talk about how you got into this space. Cause I feel like almost, um, almost a lot of businesses either start because there's a necessity or you kind of stumble across it. Right. Tell me your background in subscriptions. How'd you get into this space? Yeah. What's kind of funny is that um, I actually, the, what I was doing before this was logistics. So I was doing marketing and content around shipping stuff for e-commerce, which is about as boring as it gets. Um, so finding ways to like make that compelling and interesting, or at least easy to understand was something I was doing. And uh, I joined QPilot as a co-founder because QPilot is a subscription software that cares a lot about logistics stuff. Like you know, if you're going to have a food box subscription, do you actually know when you're going to get it? Do you actually know what the cost of the shipping can be? So it, so that's how I started on it. And then for me, the more I got into it, the more I started to love around um, understanding consumer behavior, predictable revenue, how we're acquiring customers, how that plays into retention and that whole, whole big pie. So when you sit down and talk to a particular client that they're already in business and they're looking to add some subscription model, what are some of those core things that you look for in a business to help them find something that they can create a subscription around? Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, the first thing is starting with some obvious questions. Do you already have customers that are asking about it? Right. That's the easiest one. If some people are already asking, Hey, can I get this on a subscription? I'm ordering this a lot. That's the first thing. The second thing is, do you already have a high recurring um, repeat order rate? Right. People coming back to you, for the same thing over and over again, or people coming back to you, asking you if you could offer other services is another good question. Um, and then ultimately the other thing is like, what do you know about your customer that they're looking for that maybe they're not getting from you, but that you know that they would be interested in. And that's the tipping point where you can maybe start to figure out if subscriptions really work for you. 
I'm reminded of gyms, right? Gyms have like, mm-hmm. to me, the ultimate subscription model because yep. you get the subscription, especially since we're right around the end of the year. You got 2023 around the corner. Everybody's going to make their New Year's resolutions. I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to go to the gym. This is the thing I'm going to do. And then what happens is you get too busy, but you don't want to actually shut the subscription off because then that's you telling yourself that you're quitting, right? right? So you're never going right. to turn it off. You're going to keep it on. I remember having a 24-hour membership for years, even though I wasn't going to the gym. Uh, and I know it's not necessarily great business model to, to kind of mimic, but how can I get a subscription like that? Something that people really desire and are kind of hesitant to turn it off. <laughs> That's a great question. I mean, actually, a lot of times when I'm creating messaging, I, I use the gym membership as a good example because you know how hard it is to cancel a gym membership. It's like you have to go in, <laughs> they're going to hard sell you, like they're going to offer you this special or this or that. They're going to shame you, body shame you a little bit, like you really aren't working on your goals. It could be a little bit tough. So I think it's what's what makes it interesting is is aligning with 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 benefits right like a really popular one now is like cbd right like cbd is something that's growing people love it like you know as as thc and weed becomes more legal that's going to probably eclipse that in many ways but thinking about there's product based businesses that are really service oriented are are product businesses that are great for subscriptions because people are consuming that on a regular basis for thinking about services it's ultimately the best businesses i see actually are finding a focus so if, if you're thinking about a specific thing you want to do, you can offer a subscription on that. Like I mentioned, podcasts as a consulting, content creation is another common one, legal services. There's lots of areas with service provide business as well as e-commerce or typical um, like physical product businesses that people want on a regular basis. And the trick is, are you asking them how, what needs are getting answered and what needs are going unanswered? Because if you can find needs that are going unanswered, you're going to find some, uncover some really interesting subscription opportunities. I'm curious, especially because you're talking about the podcast stuff and that's kind of my space, right? Um, I'm I'm curious, how do you start to differentiate yourself when you're creating subscriptions? Because I don't want to be like every other podcaster. I'm sure every service provider doesn't want to be like everybody else. How do you differentiate a subscription model like that? Well, I mean, one of the biggest ways is kind of like a common marketing tack is picking a common enemy. So the idea is like, you know, a lot of people in general don't trust or like agencies because they feel like they, you know, just take a check and they don't do much. So one of the a, a common ways to think of like, you know, we are not your typical podcast agency in the sense of we come up with a couple ideas on a chalkboard and then you do it right kind of thing. The, the, the idea is, is understanding what people are looking for, or what they're, they're, they're disliking. So I've got a friend here locally in Salt Lake. He does a little podcast consulting and I was asking him these types of questions. It's like, okay, what are people coming to you for? Well, they want help launching a podcast. Do they like the price point? Well, some people are a little uncomfortable or they're not sure about that. Okay. Well, what else is happening? Do you have people that are partially, par- partially and partially out? It's like, yeah, I get a lot of people that seem like they're motivated, but they don't quite get enough. And so that's where I start getting into the subscription option. It's like, okay, well, if you've got people that are halfway, maybe you can get them to subscribe for part of the package, right? So instead of doing the whole service form, maybe you can get them in the door on a subscription related to just some consulting or some editing. Like, you know what? You create the video, you record it. We'll just edit it for you. And you can break down those services into smaller pieces that are more palatable for people. And once you start to find that something's working, you can then double down on it. What about management? So it's one thing to start acquiring some of these customers, right? Like, okay, cool. I got a subscription model. This is great. How do I know which one's paid? Which customers are up to date? Like, is there a specific uh, CRM or program that you're utilizing to kind of manage these subscriptions when you set them up? Yeah. So for e-commerce subscriptions, that is something that QPilot does that we do really well. And we do all the management, making sure it's being charged correctly. If there's a failure or anything like that, we run a lot of automation on that. If you're talking about service-based businesses, there are some programs with Stripe. Um, and depending on like how you're managing it, like if you're on WooCommerce, there's some really cool membership and subscription plugins that will, that will do that as well. So it is looking at the space and looking at um, what kind of fits in with your with the right CRM that you're using. Uh, subscriptions for, uh, well, when people have made it really, really successful in the subscription space, I tend to think of gyms and SaaS companies, uh, software as a service. Um, is this something that we can kind of set up like as an affiliate thing, or is this something that's designed specifically, like should a subscription be for one business and one business only, or should it, could it be something like where an affiliate can kind of set that up like affiliate marketing type thing? Um, so you're talking about like with affiliate marketing where somebody's setting up like some of the lead gen for the actual core business. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I think so because affiliate affiliate marketing can be really, really powerful within a lot of spaces. So I think um, you're actually, I don't know if you ever heard of a program called My Subscription um, Addiction, but they basically have created an affiliate marketing site for subscription box boxes. So you can go there and you do research on different types of subscriptions, depending on what you're looking for. But what they're also doing is something where they call whitelisting, where they actually do ad and content creation for people based off of um, other affiliates profiles so that they can market to them. So if you think about uh, the affiliates make a lot of sense, because the biggest disconnect is that is, re is around retention. If you don't understand why customers are buying from you, you're going to lose them really quickly. So like in the gym membership example, you know, people that work out, can make be great affiliates, but you want to get more specific. Like for me, I have different goals maybe than you have when we go to the gym, right? I have different goals for my wife or from my friend down the street. So a different affiliate person is going to speak differently. Like right now I'm, I'm starting to do some triathlon training. So a, a triathlon affiliate is going to speak to me to get me into the gym. Whereas, you know, my wife maybe just wants to lose 10 pounds. So an affiliate, like a, like a, a mom who's talk about working from home or those types of things is going to speak to her. So affiliates allow you to kind of broaden your reach and get really specific to customers while driving them back to the core business. Uh, that totally makes sense. That speaker is going to speak to you and that's really where the sale, the connection is going to be, right? Um, tell me about Q Pilot. What is it? What is it that you guys are doing exactly? Tell me a little bit about your business. Sure. Yeah. So we're specifically targeting e-commerce companies. So, you know, if you're selling pet food, CBD, supplements, cosmetics, all, all those types of things where something physical is getting shipped. So um, we're basically a program that makes it really easy to launch that, manage that. Customers can log in to your website and then change whatever they need, whatever they want. So we believe that flexibility is kind of the future of a lot of these repeat purchases. So for example, if you're getting like, say a food subscription, you know, you might want to pause it. You might be out of town for two weeks and you want to relocate it to, you know, Denver instead of LA. Like you want to be able to make that experience really, really easy. So there's lots of control and we're doing all the logic and functionality behind the scenes so that your business looks like you have this really flexible subscription program. How is that different from like uh, if we set up an Amazon for fulfillment or like drop shipping to set up like on a recurring order? How does a subscription differ from like a recurring order and how does QPilot kind of help facilitate that? Yeah. So the thing about like, say, like using Amazon is you really don't have a ton of control there. Like Amazon just basically lets you do a discount five or 10 percent off. And the customer sometimes um, they have a little bit of control in what they can do, but not a ton. Um, another model might be like if you're looking like a, a typical like Shopify store, like they're either doing a drop shipping model or something like that. Um, there's a lot of subscription software out there to make the repeat or the recurring part just kind of go basically like it charges the card every month. But there's a lot of limitations in the and in, in like how people can modify their order. Can I double the size of my order? Like if I'm ordering protein powder and I want to order two next month on my subscription, does it know how to accurately charge shipping? Like th there's a lot of things that, that go behind the scenes that make it more complicated than you would think, which is why like the logistics background helps with some of that stuff. You know, and it's funny because I feel like a, it's shifted. When I was growing up, there were very few things that I paid a subscription to. Very, very few things. Today, I feel like I have subscriptions for everything. I have a subscription for my streaming platform. Uh, I have a subscription for my gym membership. I have a subscription for uh, the music that I listen to. Like, there's right. so many different subscriptions that are out there. I feel like it's 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 just something that most businesses are kind of moving into. And I'm thinking uh, the one that came to my head right now was Dollar Shave Club. I mean, you yeah. and I both have a very similar issue, right? So, <laughs> uh, so you know, I, I order from Dollar Shave Club on a regular basis, and they allow me, me the flexibility to do certain things when my order is got like I only order blades like on a quarterly basis because I don't need right. one every single right. week, right? I, it, it shifts like that, and every once in a while, I want to add a, a, a the razor or or maybe exactly. like deodorant or something to that particular order um, is, is like one of those companies. Is that something that you're kind of modeling the uh, the subscription model around the flexibility there? Yeah, yeah you're using my favorite example. I, I, I'm the exact same way. I order razors on a quarterly basis. I sometimes add this or that. And yeah, it's flexibility. I know if I want to change anything, I literally go to my email, search for Dollar Shave Club, two clicks, I'm on the website and I can change anything and everything, how often I'm getting it, when I'm going to get the next one, all those things. Dollar Shave Club has invested millions of dollars in making that type of software work that flex, be that flexible. And so a lot of smaller brands, and I mean, smaller could be like 50 million a year in revenue, need some that same kind of flexibility. And so QPilot's trying to shorten the learning curve for some brands by letting them just use our software to do a lot of that flexibility to, for themselves. 
uh, how how easy is it to integrate? So like, let's say you're using a Shopify store, you are your, uh, Amazon fulfillment or whatever it is on the e-commerce space. How is it? How easily does Qpilot integrate? Pretty easily. Like we're on Shopify and WooCommerce, and so if you're on either of those, it's it's usually within thirty minutes to an hour to get yourself set up and implemented. And then if you have existing subscriptions, we can do migrations, and that's something that we help do, so they go a little bit faster. But I'd say even with a managed process, you can be up within a week or two. If you're doing it on your own, you could be up within just an hour. That's not bad. An hour yeah. to get yeah. yourself like beauty, up and set it's up. Of software. It's the beauty of software, man. Yeah, it is the beauty of software. All right. What about starting off? Like, you know, you've worked with existing e-commerce companies, so I'm sure yeah. they're coming in saying, hey, maybe our profit margins are low. This is the next avenue that we right. want to invest in. What are some of the common things that you see in some of these organizations where they're taking that next step that maybe somebody who's starting off can maybe kind of you yeah, know, yeah. cut down on that learning curve? Yeah, I would say the biggest thing it's kind of this fun thing where if you know how to, if you know why people are buying, it makes acquisition a lot easier. So what makes subscriptions hard is that people are coming up with an offer. So for example, um, you know, I know there's say you're selling supplements and maybe they're weight loss supplements. And so you're selling weight loss supplements and you're creating this package, say it's $30 and you're giving 20% off the first month and then month and then the subscription starts. Well, then a lot of subscription businesses month one to month two, they see this huge drop off like a cliff, right? Like they're losing 30, 40, sometimes more than 50% of their subscribers. And they're worrying about why this is, why this is happening. Well, people are starting the weight loss pill and they're having a problem because a weight loss pill does actually work. Say so you have to take it for, for three months to see results. So people don't see results right away. And so now they're upset. They cancel. They're not going to stick with the product. They don't take it that often. So if you're not very get very good at looking for somebody who's interested in a long-term solution in this example, you're going to churn people. So a lot of times what the mistakes I see e-commerce companies making with subscriptions is they're not thinking about how the way they're acquiring customers and the message they're sending and what they're thinking about the product, how that ties into retention efforts. And so that happens all the time where, you know, people want something cool. It's not as cool as they think it is they cancel. It doesn't work as easily. Sometimes you have to just get better at explaining to people like, you know, three months of using this and my body's transformed. That's the ad that's on the landing page. That's in the initial email. So you're telling people every time you got to take this for three months. If you want to see changes, you know what I mean? And sometimes that means changing the subscription so that it has to go three months. You can't cancel in the first month. And while making that more restrictive means your conversions might dip, it means your retention is going to be better because now you're getting people to that three month period and they can see results. And that's the key, right? The retention is the key here. Um, I was watching, uh, I forgot what it was, but it was on social media about the negative effects that social media has on us. Uh, and one of the things they were talking about is dwindling down that idea of what makes the growth factor successful. And they talked about Facebook and it went down to get somebody to have 10 friends in seven days. If you can get somebody to sign on to Facebook and get them to connect with 10 people in seven days, you'll have somebody who's there for a long period of time. And right. as you're discussing what you're saying about the, the, you know, having somebody have that short term success, I feel like that's something that they need to embed in their, uh, in their, in their subscription program is when somebody signs up, give them the ability to have those short wins up front. Right. Cause then you'll retain them for a longer period of time. And I think that's where we start dipping into how do you scale this, right? How do you turn a subscription into something that you get you know, a couple 50, 20, 30 people, whatever it is into thousands of people that come subscribe. What makes a subscription like that scalable? I think it's content. I mean, you do content. I do content for me. I'm, I'm really biased towards that, but I'm thinking about like the idea again, if we're talking weight loss supplement, What's really going to move the needle is like videos from people that have done it before, before and after, right? Testimonials. The, 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 yeah. The testimonials, the charismatic person who's leading the brand that their, 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 their Instagram profile is what made you click through to try the product. So if you're thinking about, it again, it's like, Hey, this is a, this is a process. Uh, so the immediate success is you start taking the pill. Well, am I getting a text message on day two saying, congrats on your first two days? I know you're, I know you don't see results right away, but you're on the way, right? Like reaffirming that touch point, you are on the way to change. So if you know why people sign up, you're hitting that over and over and over again. So we go back to that podcast view. It's like, Hey, let's just get you a video, mate. Let's get you your first episode done. Right. 
We've got that. Boom. Look at you. Look at this. This is great. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. So a lot of times the, the, what makes it scale is unlocking the why people sign up back to why they cancel and seeing what information is there and then using content and community to drive that engagement and drive people to keep using the product or the service. That's the key right there. Keep people excited, man. How do you do that? You got to keep people excited, digging into into what it is you, what it is that you do, and then just showing the positive side effects of that. Right? Look, this person stuck to it. After two months, they got this. Uh, I love those V shred uh, commercials that you see on. Uh, well, at least they show up on my Instagram feed all the time. <laughs> They're like, "Look, this ripped. Eat pizza. Eat ice cream. Eat what you want." Right? Like those. That's kind of the community that you're talking about. Look at the results that this person had. Look at the results right. that this person had. I mean, those are the things that are going to drive your business and your subscription model to, to increase. Right. So let's talk about what's the difference between a business that, and I know it's kind of obvious, but what's the difference between a business that has a subscription model, a recurring revenue coming in and the ones that don't, especially when it comes to either raising capital or being yeah. sold, how does that affect a business? Yeah. I mean, it's pretty significant from, I mean, if you think about every financial person on the planet, they're all looking at how predictive their modeling can be for what revenues look like. And so if you're already, if a lot of your revenue and, and the other part is if you take a step back, most businesses have a repurchase rate. If you're buying, if you're selling something and as a one-time thing, you can look and see and do quick, like within Excel, even if not other software, this is how often people come back. They come back every two months, every five months, every seven months. And you can do a lot to try to influence that. But if you're talking about, I need to see if I can take somebody who repeaches every six months down to five, you have to not have to wait the six months to find out if that's going to be influenced or not. Subscriptions mean you're already locking in that relationship and, and then you start making choices around how you can influence behavior over time as well. So the, the financial aspect means you have that, like you mentioned, the predictable revenue, you're already having money come in through the door. It's a lot more even. It's not as much up and down and allows you to make more strategic decisions on how you can grow the business. Let's, uh, let's talk about the hiccups, right? So subscriptions, obviously for a business, they're magic, right? I mean, you have a, a recurring revenue stream that you can, that is predictable. We just said that's amazing. So what's the hesitation? Why is it that not every company is starting to implement or look for something like this to implement in their business? What kind of pushback are you getting? Yeah. The, the biggest thing is whether it's their core competency or not. So if you're launching a subscription box, you're obviously doing subscriptions. So you don't think twice about doing it, but say the podcast um, as an option. If I'm, if I'm trying to sell a service or a package, does creating a subscription option detract from that? Do I need to launch a new product page? Do I need to launch ads or other marketing motions to try to drive awareness to that? Or is it something that I'm already doing that I could add on as an upsell? So that that's that's some of the problem. And then there's always limitations around like, how do I implement this technically, right? Like if you have a Shopify store, it's pretty easy to add a couple apps and start doing it. If you're not on Shopify, it's, it, it becomes more complicated. Like if you're adding it to WordPress or other platforms. So I think there's a complication factor. There's a distraction factor. I mean, as a funny anecdote is like, I don't know if you saw in the news earlier this year, but BMW launched a subscription around their heated seats. So they basically ship you your, your car, you get your car that has the heated seat technology in it. But if you want to use the heated seat, you have to pay 20 bucks a month. Amen. Who said life was going to be a video game, man? That's how Fortnite is played, dude. Yeah, you can play the exactly. game, sure, for free. But all these right. other things you want yeah. in the game, you got to pay for it. But it's such a smart model. I mean, Elon Musk is going to make us pay for the blue chip, for the blue tick yeah. mark on Twitter, right? Yeah, exactly. I, I, think, I think the difference is, is you want to try to think about like video games are a really powerful one because you're seeing really fancy, fun stuff. I think when you start messing with utility, you can get a little bit like people already bought the car. They're not expecting that to happen. I think one of the examples that I really love is like, if you love BMW or Mercedes or whatever, say you're a Porsche, a Porsche fan, you love Porsche. You connect with people about Porsche all the time. You're always doing stuff with Porsche. You would probably subscribe to a content series where they just update you on cool stuff. Porsche is doing like, do you want to do a ride, a virtual ride along with a driver on a, a track in Germany on, on showing a Porsche car? Like it's it really, I think the, the the thing is you just need to be a little more creative on how you can engage with your customers and what they really want. You know, like same thing with if you're playing video games, is there is there something else that people will pay for, not just within the game, but extra, right? So that they can get better, right? If they want to be better at Fortnite, do you want to subscribe to a training module that will just make you better at Fortnite, right? Like there's all those those types of ideas.
And I'm just thinking, I, there's so many different subscriptions. As you're going through that, I'm thinking, what else do I got in my in my own mind, right? AMC, a, like the A stubs, right? Like yep. a, whatever yep. they call it, right? You pay like 25 bucks a month, you can watch as many movies as you want. Well, three right. per week or whatever it is. Uh, again, it was something where you paid once, you show up, and now they have a recurring revenue stream. They got three of them for me, me and my two kids. So they know they're going to get 75 but, bucks a month from us, guaranteed, whether or not we go watch a movie. But that totally changes the model of business. Well, and it, 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 what's really, really cool about that example is one, you're already marketing people who go to see movies, right? So they're already seeing value. There's a value exchange, right? I go see movies a lot too. I'm the same thing. So I subscribe to one locally here because it gives me like, I get the discount off the concessions. I get the ticket. It, financially, it makes easy sense. But what the movie people aren't telling you is that they know that the value of a customer who subscribes to that is actually often three, four, or 10 times higher than somebody who's not doing it. And it's not just the recurring revenue. It's because you're more engaged. You're buying the product more consistently. They can market to you more effectively. They have more data on you on what you like or what you don't like. So those types of, the, that to me is what's exciting about subscriptions is if you think about it as the term engagement, you can engage more with people. You get more information back from them, but you also know more about them so you can sell to them more. So it's more than just that repeat purchases. Now you have a, a, a more intense like relationship with them. And so you can sell sell to that. I'm so glad. I, I'm so glad you brought that up because you're absolutely right. Because I don't have to pay for a ticket when I go to the movie theater, I buy a lot more concessions. And then when they send me an email and they're like, hey, by the way, it's uh, $5 for like a Coke and popcorn today on whatever day. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm there. Like they know a lot more data. I mean, right. that's that's the that's the economy we're in. We're in the attention economy. And the, the idea is how do you grab and capture a lot of these people's attention? Now, we for right now, all we know is for the most part is we're going to place ads in front of people. So we're going to show right. up on TikTok or in Instagram or on Facebook or whatever it is as an ad. But to have the ability to already obtain that name, email, and phone number, and to control the data like a subscription allows us to do, that is much more powerful for a business, right? right? Absolutely. Absolutely. To me, that's what that's what separates the just getting started in business to I'm ready to sell this thing for some mega bucks. <laughs> right. I mean, all right. So if people want to reach out to you if they want to start kind of considering this aspect as part of their business, what's that process like and how can they do that? Yeah. I mean, if they're interested, I put out a ton of content on that. Like, you know, feel free to email me. I also put out a weekly newsletter on subscriptions called the subscription prescription. Uh, you can get your weekly dose to kind of figure things out. Um, I think there are some great communities out there as well. Um, the subscription trade association or subta is one, they do a conference every year, but really, I mean, if you're curious, connect with me on LinkedIn, send me an email. I'm always happy to chat and talk through these ideas. And this stuff, this stuff, I think, in almost any business, there's always some little thing that you can do to your business to kind of take it to that next level. And I think this is one of those things that if you can figure out what your offer is, a, a good offer, something that, that makes sense for your particular client, this could be that piece in your business that you're missing. Um, and it's not always the easiest thing to do. You talked about the podcast thing. Uh, I have a subscription model for like some podcast coaching. And, and it's just like you were saying, it's like 29 bucks a month. And it gives you the ability to one on one have a conversation with me, uh, you know, once a week, well, not one on one, but you know, what, it, it's, it's a semi private coaching call type thing. Um, and I just don't think my offer is quite there yet, which is why a subscription model doesn't take off yet. What can make an offer just that much juicier? Like what is it well, a common thing that you see across subscriptions that makes an offer that much better? So I'd say like taking a step back is more information gathering. It's like, are you asking people what is, is, are you figuring out what's keeping them from unlocking what they want? Like, do you know, why they aren't, haven't launched or why what's keeping them from scaling or what weaknesses are in their operations and things like that. For, for me, it's really, if you can start to uncover more data around the problem that you're trying to solve with the offer that gives you more power in making the offer more like more compelling. Um, Cause otherwise you're kind of shooting in the dark, right? Like if you decide like, Oh, I'm going to add this and this and this, well, people might not think that's compelling. Right. So, um, I, and, and the other thing too, is like, uh, something we see is actually often raising the price actually helps because you start to come across more as a premium product, a premium service. Um, sometimes things are too cheap. So you're actually attracting people that are only looking for discounts instead of somebody who's looking for value. So, um, you know, it, there's also the relationship part. Is it 
would it be more effective to do one-on-one? You could charge more, maybe have less, and it could be more profitable, right? So there's different aspects of that. You could start testing to see um, what people like, what resonates with them, um, what they'd be willing to buy. Ladies and gents, like I think we as a population are just that much more agreeable to jumping in on some of these subscriptions. So if you don't have a subscription in place, this might be something that you want to look into. So Matt, before we head out, one last thing I want to make you give you the last word and one more time, uh, let people know how they can get a hold of you and any last final thoughts before we head out today. Yeah, absolutely. Again, connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, definitely. If you want to shoot me an email, Matt at qpilot.cloud or a uh, you know, you can find my newsletter through my LinkedIn profile. Um, and really, I just think about engagement. If you're looking at customers wondering on, on how you can build a more predictable revenue model, start listening to them and talking to them about what problems aren't being solved or what more they would like from you. And I think you'll find some really interesting information to unlock a subscription program. Ladies and gents, that's what we got for you guys today. Get your subscriptions off and rolling. You know, it's cool to have them. It's even better to be generating revenue from them. So maybe, you know, take a little note from that Netflix, that Spotify, all those other HBO type subscriptions you got and maybe think, hmm, is there something maybe I can offer my business that can give me a revenue stream and make sure you guys go to www.qpilot.cloud qpilot.cloud check out all the services they have to offer for helping you get your subscription off and rolling and of course matt thank you for being on the show today ladies and gents we'll catch you guys on the next one peace awesome and we're Thanks. out it's over go home is your business in need of marketing try starting a podcast but not just any podcast podcast like a pro We can show you how to take your business from being invisible to becoming a brand people trust. Go to www.businessbros.biz to get started today. Business Bros! All right, Matt. There it is, man. What do you think? I love it. I love it. (laughs) Sweet, dude.